Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Western Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you so much for joining us. Just a couple of announcements before we get started. You can use your Q&A button on your screen to address questions to any of our presenters at any time. Um, we love to answer your questions, so don't be shy. You can ask questions about any of the institutions, about the application process, anything related to college admission is fair game. Your camera and your microphone are turned off, so the Q&A um, the Q&A feature is the only way you have of interacting with our panelists. The panelists can't see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening as part of this College Fair series, so be sure to sign up for some more. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week, um, as are all the other presentations that are part of the College Fair, and that will be available at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. And now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Hello, thank you. Uh, my name is Laura Jewell, and I'm an, the Transfer Admission Counselor at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, um, in Las Vegas, Nevada. So my presentation, as short as it is, let's go ahead and start. So UNLV is a place like no other, obviously because of its location, but also because of its academics. We do have 10 academic colleges uh, ranked nationally, internationally. Our hospitality management program is number one in the world, number um, number one in the country, number two in the world. We have over 300 undergraduate graduate majors. Um, you know, we're considered tier one research institution, and we uh, are among the most diverse in um, the country. So, admission requirements for transfer students would be 2.5 GPA with at least 24 transferable coursework. Students that have fewer um, than 24 completed coursework, um, transferable coursework, can. Uh, present high school credentials for evaluation. For those of you that are coming from a Nevada institution, an associate degree will get um, will guarantee admission into UNLV. International transfer students, we require an ACES evaluation for non-US colleges with a 2.5 GPA and uh, transferable credits and proof of English proficiency for from the non-English speaking um, countries. Transferable credits means college level coursework from accredited um, institutions, two or four year, um, and regionally accredited institutions from two or four, um, two or four year regionally accredited institutions. Non-remedial and vocational courses will not transfer to UNLV. Um, transferology is a great source for prospective students to see what courses transfer from their institution at UNLV. For, again, for NC transfers and associate degree, will waive the general education um, requirements um, at UNLV. So you most probably will spend about two years at UNLV and receive a bachelor's degree if you have an associate degree from an entry institution. If you're coming from California a Community College and I get your breast certification, will also waive your um, gen ed requirements with the exception of Nevada Constitution, obviously is unique to the state of Nevada and for breast English 102. Now, how do you pay for college? So for a student that is 15, it's enrolled in at least 15 credits per um, semester, so about 30 credits per academic year. The in-state tuition and fee, um, fees is about $8,600, and for out-of-state, um, uh, about $24,000. So about $12,000 per semester for out of state and about um, $4,000 per semester for in state. Um, about 70% of our population um, does receive some kind of um, formal financial aid. As you can see on the screen for transfer students, we do have FAFSA. Um, you know, for DACA immigrant international students, we have the alternate need form. We do have departmental scholarships that um, you can apply for. Um, also employment um, opportunities, and you can also um, uh, establish a payment plan. So now scholarships, we do have three types of scholarship. For Nevada high school graduates, we do offer Millennium Scholarship. You know if you received that while you were a senior in high school in Nevada. So to activate that, to come to UNLV, just go to nevadatreasurer.gov and you will be able to activate it. Um, just make sure you tell them you will attend UNLV. Um, regional scholarships, Western undergrad exchange scholarship can cut tuition almost in half. And that is offered for eligible transfer students that are coming from the East Coast, those um, states that are in red in the, on the screen. 
um, you have to apply for fall. You have to have a 3.0 GPA in um, no more than 90 transferable credits at UNLV. And you have to have applied for FAFSA in order to um, be eligible to receive a WIS scholarship. You don't have to apply for the scholarship. Just be admitted and applied for FAFSA. Rebel Challenge Scholarship works about the same way, the same requirements as WUI Scholarship. Um, and again, you have to um, have been admitted and applied for FAFSA. Um, how do you apply? So application for fall for UNLV is um, now open and it, it, um, it will, the submission deadline will be July 1st. Application for spring and fall 2022 will open August 1st and the deadline for spring will be December 1st, 21. Deadline for fall 22 will be July 22, July 1st, 22. You have to submit all official college transcripts to UNLV um, admissions. You can do it electronically or regular mail. Um, for NC to NC transfer, we recommend electronically as is free of charge and it loads, it uploads directly into your account. Um, that is about it from UNLV and from me, um, very short presentation. However, if you have further questions, you can contact me directly, laura.jola.unlv.edu. You can also call me, I prefer email. Thank you so much, Laura. And next we'll be hearing from the University of Nevada, Reno. Oh. Okay, I think I'm gonna share my screen there, Josh. Okay, okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Can you see it? Yep, fantastic. Awesome. Okay. Hello, everyone. Good evening. My name is Carrie M. I'm Director of Transfer Recruitment for the University of Nevada, Reno. I also have Kayla Freeman, who's also a transfer specialist with the university. We are willing to do one-on-one -on -one appointments and you can do that through our online scheduling system or join one of our webinars. So what to know about Nevada is that we are the first university to be established in the state of Nevada. We are the flagship of, of the state of Nevada. We have over 150 different programs ranging from music and the arts to engineering and the sciences. We just recently found out that all of our engineering programs are nationally ranked, which is a great achievement for us. We have about 21,000 students, including graduate students um, on our university. We are also ranked tier one by US News and World Report, which means we are ranked in the top 200 universities in the nation, as well as ranked Carnegie Research One Institution, which is the highest research uh, ranking you can achieve. We have a study abroad building, which is a, a actual building, which you can get one-on-one -on -one advising and actually other schools go through us in order to go to study abroad programs. So we're very thankful for that, to have that building on our campus. You can also do 100, 250 different clubs and organizations, everything from the physics club to the pre-nursing, pre-med club, any type of club. Um, if, if there isn't one, you can also create one. We're division one athletics. And we're located in Reno, Nevada, which is 40 minutes from Lake Tahoe and four hours from the Bay Area. So where should you start? I think you should start on a website. We have put a lot of work into our website and we have tried to answer every transfer question we can, everything from admissions to transfer agreements to do my credits transfer. We do use transferology, which allows students to submit um, course equivalencies and ask about them to see if they do transfer. They off, it also allows students to send in syllabi so we can get prior approval for students. Um, transfer agreements are also a great way to build a roadmap to our university. Um, we do have a lot of them for our nursing degrees throughout California, as well as other states. And um, we have them a, one-on-one a -on -one with our um, Nevada System of Higher Education Community Colleges. So what does a transfer student need? They need 24 transferable credits with a transferable GPA of a 2.5 to be admitted. Also a transferable associate degree from a Nevada community college, Nevada system of higher education guarantees you admissions. If you do have a 2.4 uh, transferable uh, GPA, please, please apply. We do have an alternate admissions process for students and you are sometimes able to get admissions even with a 2.4. Tuition, our in-state tuition is around seven to 8,000 per year for 30 credits. We do have two um, 
tuition scholarship programs. One's called the Western Undergraduate Exchange, the WUI Scholarship Program. Students who qualify for this um, have a transferable GPA of a 3.0. With this, we take off 12,000 off out-of-state tuition per year for students. The next one is Nevada Advantage. And that one, you have a transferable GPA of a 2.75. And we take off 8,000 off your out-of-state tuition per year. If you receive either one of these scholarships, you get it for four years and you do not have to maintain that GPA, just good academic standing of a 2.0. Our out-of-state tuition is around 23,000 per year for 30 credits. So know your degree. Um, <clears throat> we do offer tuition, wa or tuition waivers, uh, low division core waivers. And we offer them, of course, to Nevada System of Higher Education, but we also offer them to Washington, Oregon, California, and Texas. So if you do have a transferable AA, we do waive your lower division core. We also accept the IGETSI and the CSU breast certifications that will also allow you to receive the lower division core. So if you are coming from one of those states, you can get WUI and lower division core waivers. How do you apply? Step one is apply at unr.edu slash apply. The deadline is July 1st for fall and December 15th for spring. Our application opens mid-September. It is a $60 application fee, and we do need official transcripts from every institution you have attended. We also need immunization records, which are two doses of an MMR and one dose of a tetanus diphtheria within the last 10 years. If you do meet our requirements, you will be admitted. Um, we are not impacted in any of our majors, and so I would strongly suggest you apply if you're looking for some impacted majors around the nation, such as psychology, um, engineering, uh, those type of majors. And that is the end of my presentation. So thank you very much for having me tonight. Thank you so much, Carrie. And next we'll be hearing from Roseman University of Health Sciences. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Christensen Grant. I am a faculty member, um, director of admissions, and a clinical pharmacist specializing in internal med at Roseman University. Today, I'm here representing our College of Pharmacy. Um, Roseman University as a whole, we are strictly a health sciences university. We have degrees in nursing, pharmacy, dental medicine, and soon a college of medicine, but I am specifically talking about the College of Pharmacy. Um, so all of our students that come to us are transfer students. We don't have undergraduate coursework, so anything that you would complete prior to coming in would assist in you moving towards your becoming a doctor of pharmacy. So in terms of our campuses, we have two campuses with a College of Pharmacy. One is in Henderson, Nevada, so located right outside of Las Vegas. Um, in the state of Nevada, we are the only College of Pharmacy in the entire state. Uh, so we do have a good network of preceptors, a good network of alumni as well um, within the state of Nevada. Then uh, in South Jordan, Utah, which is actually where I, I'm located, we have a campus right outside of Salt, Salt Lake City. And there we are only one of two colleges of pharmacy in the entire state. I'm very lucky that we have two really beautiful campuses with a lot of offerings. One of the things that makes Roseman University extremely unique is that we are a three-year doctor of pharmacy program. Most doctor of pharmacy programs are four years. And our teaching model is extremely unique and is centered around our six point mastery learning model. So we believe that in order for people to become healthcare professionals, whether it be a pharmacist or a dentist or a nurse, you need to be excellent at what you do. So when you come to our program, you do not pass if you get a C, you do not pass if you get a B. In order to pass anything in our curriculum, you have to get a 90% or higher in order to pass that course. Is it difficult? Absolutely. Is it worth it though? Yes, to protect your patients and to protect the degree that you're working so hard for. And so to help you achieve this, we have a learning model that is set up to help you. Our classroom is set up in a way that makes it very interactive, very team-based in our learning style. You not only are taught by faculty, but your faculty work with you to help identify what your weaknesses are, where you're struggling, and you have a team that you work with every day to help solidify confidence. 
concepts. We have a block curriculum. So you only take one course at a time when you're with us rather than five or six courses and juggling around which one do I need to study for, which one needs my attention. When you're with us and you're learning cardiology and you're learning about congestive heart failure, you are only focused on that at that particular moment until you take an exam, pass that exam, and then you move on to the next subject. So it allows you to streamline your focus. We also get you practicing in a pharmacy within your first year. So you start school with us in August. We will have you in a pharmacy one day every two weeks, um, starting in October. And that continues during your first and second year. Your third year, no more classes. You are all out on rotations through a variety of experiences from a community pharmacy to oncology pharmacy to trauma ICU pharmacy. Um, and you'll switch through those every six weeks in your last year year. So in order to come to us, what is the pathway you need to follow? So high school, you've got that checked, you're, you're ready to move on to the next steps. Well, for us, the next step is you need to attend another college. You've got to get ready to transfer to us. And that is where you're going to complete your prerequisite courses. And then you would come to us, spend three years with us, and you would get your doctor of pharmacy degree. After you graduate, you are ready to practice, you have your license, or you could go on to become more of a specialist with some postgraduate opportunities opportunities like completing a residency or a fellowship. I completed two years of residency to become an internal medicine specialist. So what are the requirements that you would have to complete before you come to us? Well, we have these number of prereqs that you would have to complete before you would start. That includes Gen Chem 1 and 2 with lab, organic chemistry 1 and 2 with lab, calculus, microbiology, anatomy, physiology, English composition, and speech. For all of the math and sciences, you need a grade of C or better. For the English and speech, you would need a grade, a grade of B or better. To be eligible to apply, however, you do not actually have to finish every single one of these classes. You can apply and still have some of those courses remaining. So if you have five out of the eight math and sciences complete, you are ready to apply for pharmacy school, knowing that you could be admitted and start pharmacy school in August as long as you finish up those remaining prereqs and get the grades that you need. To come into pharmacy school, we are looking for a preferred overall GPA of 2.8 or higher. You need to have completed at least 60 semester um, credit hours in order to come in. And then we get questions all the time about, well, do I need a bachelor's degree? You do not. Do I need the PCAT or the pharmacy admissions test? You do not require that. We do not require that either. But it is strongly recommended. It will make your application more competitive. And I always say with the bachelor's degree, you've got to do what's right for you. For me, I got a bachelor's degree mainly because I needed that time to mature a little bit before I went into a doctoral level degree program. So if you are interested in pharmacy, I have a number of ways that you can contact us and we can get you connected with the shadowing experience or learning more about the profession or more about our university. We have a page dedicated here for you as a QR. Feel free to take a screenshot of it or scan it with your phone. You can connect with us through Facebook, Instagram, or even email or call us. Uh, thank you all and see you later. Thank you so much. And next, we'll hear from Kansas State University. Okay, let me start my timer here. Hi, everybody. My name is Antonio, and I'm one of the admissions representatives here at Kansas State University. And I'm going to be giving you a, a brief overview about what K-State is. So for those of us who aren't familiar with Kansas State University, we are located in Manhattan, Kansas, otherwise known as the Little Apple, not to get confused uh, with the Big Apple in Manhattan, New York. Um, we do offer um, other campus locations like in Salina campus, in Salina, Kansas, where our Polytechnic campus is housed. And we also offer um, in Olathe campus for um, some graduate programs, but, Let's dive into some fast facts about K-State. So um, if we go to the bottom right of the screen, you'll see here uh, two stats that I like to talk about is that we have the number one happiest students according to the Princeton Review. And then we have the number two students who love their college. So I don't know how many of you guys are actually familiar with the Princeton Review, but these are reviews done by students. So my peers, or I guess what would be my former peers since I'm an alumni, 
Um, this is how students say they feel about K-State, not professors, not any deans or anything like that. And I can personally attest to these statistics because I decided to stick around after graduation to kind of be the one giving uh, this information to you. Uh, moving up to the top of the screen, you'll see here that we have a 22,000 plus student population, which is on the smaller end of a big division one school, but that definitely plays to its advantages here. And that'll kind of lead me to my next point. If we go down to the bottom of the screen, you'll also see that we have an 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So basically what that means is by the time that we're in our upper level classes within our major, we're not going to be in large lecture halls. In fact, I think the most students I had my junior year and senior year was about 26. And that really allowed me to personalize my experience and get connected to my professors in and outside of the classroom when I had questions about assignments, study materials, uh, and even any random thing that I needed, uh, you know, when I was, if I was struggling in class or anything like that. So I just want to hit that home. We're not going to be in large lecture halls all four years. But diving into some of my more favorite facts about the university, you'll, you'll see here that we have the number one highest starting salary in the state of Kansas, and that we have a 97% job or continuing education placement rate. Uh, which goes to show how well we set our students up for success. So six months after uh, students graduate from K-State, they're either in grad school or in a job within their field. So one of the ways that we do that is, uh, one of the ways that we set our students up for success is by hosting uh, one of the largest career fairs in the Big 12, where we'll bring 800 plus employers to come recruit our students for summer internship opportunities and jobs after they graduate. But diving into academics, um, you'll see here that we have 250 plus majors. We also offer 50 plus minors. Uh, we also offer undergraduate research, which is a good way for you as a student to not only get connected to professors here at the university, but it's a good way for you to show that you have experience within your field. Uh, we have 500 plus clubs and organizations here at K-State. So we'll have all those organizations within your major, within, leadership, multicultural organizations, faith-based organizations, Greek life, we're like, we'll literally have anything that you're looking for. And as a transfer student, my best advice to you is just to get connected as quickly as possible, uh, just because your two or three years here at K-State are gonna fly by so fast. So um, yeah, definitely look for all those opportunities to get involved. Um, but let's dive into how we actually uh, afford to come to K-State. So here at the university, we uh, scholarships in a series of is just applying for a general university scholarship and award or a tuition waiver as a transfer student you'll be eligible for one of two scholarships depending on where your gpa is at uh, we also offered a test optional scholarship this year uh, mainly because of the pandemic but this was for our uh, incoming freshmen so this won't really apply to transfer students uh, we will also accept the fafsa um, so if you have any questions about that, we'll, we will also accept it. Typically our uh, priority due date for this is gonna be December 1st, but I know students, I know students who are sending us that, uh, that FAFSA even now, and you know, they're still getting what they're eligible for. But lastly, another way that you can uh, make K-State a little bit more affordable is by signing up or creating a K-State Scholarship Network profile, which is, these are, this is basically all of our smaller departmental scholarships that you can, uh, be matched with based off your academics, your interests, your hobbies, and things like that. So what are our next steps? So you'll see here um, our admissions requirements. So this is for undergraduate students or for incoming freshmen. For transfer students, all you need is a 2.0 transfer GPA uh, to get admitted into case eight. Some of our um, colleges have specific uh, GPA requirements. So if for whatever reason you don't meet that GPA requirement, you could always start in our open option program, build your KSA GPA, and then transfer into that program. So um, in order to start the application, you would want to go to k-state.edu forward slash apply. And Lily, um, if you have any questions or would like to get a hold of me, you can email me at kstate.edu. -state um, I also offer Calendly appointments where you can set up a virtual one-on-one -on -one with me and I can help answer any of your questions about the transfer process or answer any of your questions about K-State in general. Thank you. Thanks so much, Antonio. And next we'll be hearing from John at the University of Kansas. All right, 
Hi, thank you for joining us this evening. My name is John Trix with the University of Kansas located in Lawrence, Kansas. Um, my email is up there. So please feel free to reach out and ask me if you have any questions about KU or admissions process or anything like that. Um, so what I want to talk about this evening is, uh, you know, a few things that make KU unique, uh, the differentiators, if you will. So we are a member of the Association of American Universities. We are in the bottom third of all costs, and we are one of only 26 public institutions um, in the AAU. So if you're not familiar, the AAU is a group of right around 65 institutions in the United States and Canada that receive roughly 60% of all federal research funding. So what that means for you is we're able to pull in top faculty and staff from all over the world because they know they're going to be receiving the funding to finance the research that they're so interested in. Um, so we think that's really important because we're extremely adamant about hands-on experiential learning opportunities. So a large number of our students get involved in research very early on in their undergraduate career. Um, we also encourage students to get internships um, while they're in their undergraduate career because we want to help set you up for success, build that resume, and help you get that job when you graduate. We also have several great de degree options. Um, we have online. We also have our Edwards campus located in Kansas City, and then we have our main campus in Lawrence. We also have medical campuses in Wichita, Salina, and our main research hospital, which is located in Kansas City. Um, and third, and I think the most important of the three differentiators is the Jayhawk Network. We have over 350,000 alumni worldwide, and it's just a great community to be a part of. There's a lot of tradition, and there's nothing quite like being in a different state and seeing somebody wearing a KU shirt and yelling rock chalk. <clears throat> So as I mentioned, undergraduate research is a really big component and something we uh, we truly, truly want to get our students involved in. As you can see, uh, we had 259 presenters at a undergraduate research symposium a few years ago. Um, I know I was involved in research, even in uh, classes that weren't pertaining to my major. I was used as a guinea pig, but it was still a really cool experience for me. Um, and then something, like I said, we're very adamant about is those internship opportunities. So one thing that's great about the city of Lawrence, um, where KU is located, is our geographical location. So we're pretty much smack dab between the state capital, Topeka, and um, the major metropolitan area of Kansas City. Um, so in Topeka, it being the capital, all of our students who are interested in law, political science, legislature, um, we've had several students intern and shadow there and get great experience. And then um, over in Kansas City, there are multiple Fortune 500 companies that have headquarters located there. Um, Garmin, Cerner, Bushnell, um, we're right around 75% of all sport related architecture firms. Um, so there's ample opportunities for our students to actually start doing those internships, um, you know, while they're in their junior year um, and, and getting that work experience to add to their resume. And then something we're extremely proud of is our study abroad program. We have three times the national average of number of students who study abroad um, because we have so many scholarships available. We have over 160 programs in 70 different countries. Um, ranging from two weeks up to a whole year. So there's ample opportunities to do that. Um, and just because you're transferring in, don't think that you won't be able to fit that into your schedule. Um, a colleague of mine transferred to KU and she was able to study abroad four times and still graduated in four years. So at KU, it's all about discovering your passion. We wanna make sure you get the opportunity to uh, find your interest areas. We have over 200 fields of study um, and Something I think KU does extremely well is keep our class sizes small. Um, we have right around 19,000 undergraduate student population, but as you can see, 74% of our classes have fewer than 30 students and 88% have fewer than 50. Even those larger lecture halls are going to be supplemented with a lab or discussion, so you're still going to be able to get that individualized attention to make sure you're being uh, successful in those classes. And if you do end up transferring to KU, you will be in good company. Right around 27% of our student population are transfer students. We also offer our Transfer University 101 course. It's a one credit hour class you can take your first semester at KU. Um, so obviously you would be in a group with fellow transfer students just to help you get acclimated to the community, um, you know, help you find your way around KU and another support service to make sure you're staying successful. So if you're not familiar, um, you know, I already mentioned the, the community at KU is great, but the city of Lawrence is supremely supportive of the institution. It's per constantly ranked a top 10 college town. Um, 
you know, so it's, it's a great place to do outside activities. We have over 500 miles of hiking and biking trails. Clinton Lake's about eight miles away. Um, and then there's ample opportunity to get involved outside of the classroom. We have over 600 different clubs and organizations on campus, ranging from academic to athletic and everywhere in between. Uh, there's a group that gets together every Friday at IHOP. They wear flannel shirts and they eat pancakes together. So uh, no matter what you're interested in, there's definitely a like-minded group for you. Um, so as far as living options on campus, um, we do have traditional residence halls, but we also have some unique options as well. We have one of the largest and oldest um, scholarship hall communities in the country. We also have several different on-campus apartment options, which are extremely popular with our transfer students. So you get the freedom of living in an apartment um, style living, but you have the um, security of living on campus. And one of the most important things, and this is something I get asked a lot, is how will my courses transfer? We actually have a great database on our website called CredTran. Um, it'll show you what your courses from your current institution will transfer to at KU. So you can kind of get those and plug them into the degree into the degree program you're interested in um, by finding the program curriculum on our uh, course catalog. So it'll show you what those courses will transfer over. If you don't find your courses um, on there, don't get discouraged. It operates off of previously transferred courses. So it could just be that no one has transferred those courses from that institution before. Um, if you have any additional questions, please reach out to me. And I think the best thing about KU is it's the only place where you can be a Jayhawk. Thank you, John. And next we'll be hearing from Newman University. Hello everyone, my name is Holly Weatherburn and I am a transfer admissions counselor at Newman University. I'm just gonna go ahead and press this real quick. Having, a, having been a transfer student myself, I understand that choosing which college to go to can be a tough decision to make. So hopefully after this presentation, you'll have a little bit more information about Newman um, and kind of get to know how we prepare our students for the future. So Newman University is a close-knit community of 1,200 students with an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio and an 18 student average class size. This means that you'll get that personalized attention and customized education plan. We are located in Wichita, Kansas, the biggest city in Kansas by population and one of the top 10 places to live in the US. We are a Catholic college and we welcome all faiths and beliefs. You don't have to be Catholic or go to mass in order to be a Newman student. We were established in 1933 by our founding sisters, the Adoras of the Blood of Christ, and we are named for St. John Henry Newman, who was canonized a saint two years ago. We don't have academic advisors at Newman. We only have faculty advisors. So you'll actually be advised by a professor within the program um, that you study in who actually understands the classes that you'll take, the program itself, and even the shadowing and internship opportunities that are available to you, they kind of become more of a mentor. This helps our students to be intentional and prepare for the future. So these are some of the things that we're most known for, but I would say the most important is that high employment. Overall, 71% of our students are employed in their field of study versus the national average of 27%. This is due to the personalized attention that you'll receive, the dedication of Newman faculty in preparing students for the future, and the opportunities that are available to Newman students. It also helps that our faculty don't only possess research experience, they also have practical experience within their fields. So for example, a lot of our business professors um, either hold or have their own successful businesses or have held really high respected positions um, in, within business, for example, a CEO. So we do have around 40 undergraduate programs. I would say our most popular are our sciences, nursing, allied health, education, and business programs. We also have 11 pre-professional programs as well. So what are some of the most uh, common misconceptions of Newman University? Well, the first is that we are expensive. We do have a free application for domestic students. And we award an academic scholarship to every student admitted to the university and 99% of our students receive financial assistance. The second is that we are hard to get in. We've been test optional since 2019. Our admissions GPA requirement is a 2.25 or better. And we do recruit for fit. Our academic scholarships are based on GPA. They range, for, they range from 11,000 to 15,000 for the year for up to four semesters. And we also have some specialized transfer scholarships as well for bachelor's degree seeking students. So this is kind of the breakdown from the 11,000 to 15,000 depending on GPA. And you'll be awarded that upon admission to Newman University. 
These are some of the special transfer scholarships that you can qualify for. You have to be bachelor seeking in order to qualify for these. And um, the associate's degree, obviously you would need a trans uh, an associate's degree upon transferring to Newman University. And then for the PTK, you would have to be a PTK member. These actually stack on top of the um, academic scholarship. So if you uh, qualify for both of these scholarships, then we would choose the highest. So that would be the PTK and that would stack on top of your academic scholarship. We also have opportunities for any, anyone interested in art, theater or music and applying for the honors program also gives you the opportunity to be an honors student and be eligible for up to an additional $1,000 scholarship. We are the only private NCAA Division II college in Kansas as far as athletics. We are part of the MIAA conference and we have 18 athletic programs. If you are wanting to compete but uh, not wanting to be a collegiate athlete, we also have our intramural sports that you can get involved in, which is really cool. We are, living on campus is really nice. It's a small campus. It, it takes, you know, a minute or two to get around it, which is really nice. You never have any problems with parking. Um, but as far as residence halls, we have three, but today I'm gonna focus on Beata and Fugate because they are the most common for transfer students. So Beata Hall is a pod style. Um, it has uh, five rooms to a pod. And then all of our residence halls have laundry facilities as well as Wi-Fi. And then Fugate Hall, you either get its junior or upstanding um, two rooms or four um, rooms um, in those. And then it is more of an apartment style with a full kitchen as well. And we also have printers in the residence halls. And at Newman, you will, uh, as a student, you'll get to print up to 153 pages a week. Navigator is our supercharged support system to empower students to change their future. We asked Newman students what they needed to be successful after graduation. And from these responses, we created the Navigator program. This program offers internship and shadowing opportunities, an opportunity to have a professional mentor within your field of study, and it gets you prepared for applying for jobs in grad school. We also have our first to go program and it offers support and resources to first generation college students. This program has been designed uh, to set our first gen students up for a successful college career and turn dreams into reality. As a first gen student myself, I know that I really would have benefited from this program. Our new uh, science center was built in 2017 and it hosts our state of the art science facilities and um, KU med students in their first and second year can get taught by Newman faculty and they utilize the cadaver lab that we have. Um, and this makes Newman a great choice for healthcare science related fields and the transition to med school a smooth one. You can follow us on social media and get the latest information on scholarships and events. And if anybody has any questions, this is my information, feel free to reach out to me and you can ask me any questions that you have. Thank you so much, Holly. That is our last university presentation, but we have just a few minutes left, so we can um, use that remaining time to ask each of our panelists to answer this question, to give us an interesting or fun fact about their college or university. So if I could ask all of my colleagues to turn their cameras and mics back on. And um, so just in like maybe 30 seconds, if you could give us a fun fact, maybe a campus tradition, a particularly unique program, um, something cool about your, your campus. I don't know, really anything you have. We'll start um, with the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. All right. So for our campus, one new and a, a well, pretty unique um, is the fact that we have a brand new football stadium. So we have the Raiders Stadium. Um, it's obviously an NFL professional stadium where our football team gets to practice and play and our student uh, population actually gets to get in for free when our um, UNLV football team plays um, their games at home. Thanks, Laura. University of Nevada, Reno. I have two really quick ones. Um, we've put over $700 million in new construction into our university. You'll see in back of me, the, uh, the fit, new fitness center, as well as our new knowledge center and our college of engineering just went up this last fall. And we are working on our college of business and life sciences building. So we're excited about that. Another cool fact in the state of Nevada, we have a high population of Basque people. And so we have one of the only Basque studies programs in the nation. And so if you wanna st study the Basque um, people um, population, 
I would definitely come to the University of Nevada, Reno. Thank you. And Roseman University of Health Sciences. Um, so for us, I'll talk about how we um, originally were founded by three individuals, all three were pharmacists, um, working for another college of pharmacy that wanted to educate differently, that wanted to create a university that was student-centric, that focused on the student experience and developing our 90% mastery learning model. Um, so they came out to Henderson, Nevada. They each gave $5,000, so it just started out with $15,000, and now we are a multi-health science university um, spread across two states. Awesome. Thank you. Kansas State? I would say one of my most interesting facts about Kansas State University is that we're the first fully functioning land grant institution, which goes to show how well um, we care about education and making it accessible to everybody. So one of the ways that we do that is by awarding uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in scholarship opportunities to uh, future students like undergraduates, transfers, and even graduate students and so on. The University of Kansas. Uh, I've got two. So the first of many uh, KU athletes to get, win the gold medal in the Olympics was actually in wrestling in 1932. Um, we don't even have a wrestling team anymore. And second, uh, helium was actually discovered at KU's campus. Cool. And Newman University. I also have two little short ones. So our campus consumes roughly about 10 to 12 dozen donuts a week on Jet Fridays. We, at Jet Fridays is when you get to wear anything with a Newman logo and you get free donuts and drinks. So um, we consume a lot of donuts on a Friday. <laughs> and then the other one is our bowling program. Um, they have four individual um, national champions. And one of those actually works in our admissions department as our associate director. Cool. Thank you so much. And thank you uh, to all of our panelists for sharing with us this evening. And thank you to all of you for joining us. When you close your window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We really appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, this is just one of many sessions being hosted. So be sure to sign up for some others. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as recordings of all of the other sessions online at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. Thank you so much. Thanks again to all of you and have a great evening. Thank you.